The Indus Valley civilization, nobody actually knew that it existed until it was accidentally discovered while a railway was built, being built through a site now called Mohenjo-Daro. For over a century, one of archaeology's greatest puzzles has sat unsolved. The Indus Valley script, used by one of the world's oldest civilizations, has resisted every attempt at translation. Thousands of symbols carved into ancient seals and pottery, but no understanding of what they actually mean. Now, artificial intelligence claims to have cracked it open. And what researchers are finding challenges everything we thought we knew about this lost culture. When British archaeologists first stumbled upon the ruins of Harappa in the 1920s, they realized they'd found something extraordinary. An entire civilization as advanced as ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia had been completely forgotten by history. The Indus Valley civilization stretched across what's now Pakistan and Northwest India, flourishing between 3300 and 1300 BCE. They built sophisticated cities with drainage systems that wouldn't be matched in some parts of the world until the 19th century. But here's the problem. Unlike Egypt with its Rosetta Stone or Mesopotamia with its abundant clay tablets, the Indus Valley left us with fragments. Over 4,000 artifacts bearing inscriptions have been discovered, mostly small seals made of soapstone. Each seal contains just a handful of symbols, usually between three and six characters. The longest known inscription has only 26 symbols. That's barely enough to work with. For decades, linguists, historians, and cryptographers have tried everything. They've compared the symbols to ancient Dravidian languages, Sanskrit, and proto-languages that might have existed in the region. They've used statistical analysis, pattern recognition, and good old-fashioned guesswork. Nothing worked. The script remained silent, keeping its secrets locked away behind intricate carvings of bulls, elephants, and mysterious geometric patterns. Some scholars even began arguing it wasn't a proper writing system at all just religious or decorative symbols with no linguistic content. That debate alone consumed years of academic discussion. The Indus script doesn't play by the rules we expect from ancient writing systems. Most early scripts evolved in predictable ways. They started with simple pictograms, gradually became more abstract, and eventually developed into systems where you could clearly identify whether they were alphabetic, syllabic, or logographic. The Indus script? It does its own thing entirely. First, there's the brevity issue. Ancient Mesopotamian texts could run for hundreds of lines, giving researchers plenty of material to identify patterns and grammatical structures. Egyptian hieroglyphs covered temple walls and told detailed stories. The Indus inscriptions are maddeningly short. Imagine trying to learn English from nothing but a handful of business cards and name tags. That's essentially what researchers are working with here. Then there's the symbol count. The script uses somewhere between 400 and 700 distinct signs, depending on which scholar you ask and how you count variations. This number sits in an awkward middle ground. It's too many symbols to be a simple alphabet like Phoenician, which had around 22 letters. But it's too few to be a purely logographic system like Chinese, which uses thousands of characters. This suggests it might be a mixed system, using some symbols for sounds and others for whole words or concepts. What really makes this challenging is the lack of context. We have no bilingual texts, no parallel translations in a known language. The Rosetta Stone worked because it contained the same text in three different scripts, including Greek, which scholars could read. For the Indus script, we're working completely blind. The symbols appear on small objects like seals, tablets, and pottery. Many scholars believe these were used in trade, possibly as stamps of ownership or quality markers. But without knowing the language behind them, we can't even be certain of that. The archaeological context tells us these people had complex urban planning and extensive trade networks, but their words remain locked away, silent across 4,000 years. In 2023, a team of researchers decided to approach the problem from an entirely new angle. Instead of trying to translate the symbols directly, they used machine learning to find patterns that human eyes might miss. The AI they developed wasn't programmed with any preconceived notions about what the symbols should mean or what language they might represent. It simply crunched numbers, looking at how symbols appeared together, their frequency, their position in sequences, and thousands of other variables. The system used neural networks similar to those that power modern language translation tools. 
but instead of learning from millions of translated sentences, it had to work with those tiny inscriptions, finding statistical patterns in how symbols clustered and repeated. The AI analyzed not just the Indus script, but compared it to dozens of known ancient and modern writing systems. It looked at how real languages distribute their symbols, how they start and end words, and how complexity builds within texts. After processing thousands of inscriptions and running countless simulations, the AI identified something remarkable. The symbol patterns match the mathematical signatures of genuine linguistic writing, not random symbols or simple decorative art. This backed up researchers who'd argued for years that the script represented real language. The AI calculated that the probability of these patterns occurring randomly was astronomically low. But here's where it gets interesting. The AI started grouping symbols based on their behavioral patterns. Certain symbols almost always appeared at the beginning of inscriptions, suggesting they might be titles, names, or classificatory markers. Others seemed to function as connectors or modifiers. The system identified around 60 core symbols that appeared most frequently, with hundreds of others being variations or combinations. Then the team fed the AI data from Proto-Dravidian language reconstructions, ancient Sanskrit, and even Sumerian to see if any structural matches emerged. They also included information about the archaeological context where these inscriptions were found, the types of objects they appeared on, and the geographical distribution across Indus Valley sites. The AI began suggesting tentative correspondences, not word-for-word -word translations, but structural relationships that might indicate how the script functioned as a system. What it found wasn't what anyone expected. The AI's analysis suggested something that challenges a fundamental assumption about the Harappan civilization. The script might not represent a single unified language at all. Instead, the evidence points toward a sophisticated symbolic system that could be read in multiple languages, functioning almost like a trade pigeon or a universal system of record keeping. Think about how numbers work. Whether you speak English, Arabic, or Chinese, when you see seven, you understand the concept even though you'd pronounce it differently in each language. The AI suggested the Indus script might have worked somewhat similarly, at least for core commercial and administrative functions. Certain symbols consistently appeared in contexts suggesting quantities, goods, or proper names, functioning more as semantic units than phonetic spellings. This would explain several mysteries that have plagued researchers. It explains why the script appears so uniform across a massive geographical area spanning over a million square kilometers. It explains why it shows so little evolution over a thousand years of use. Most importantly, it explains why attempts to link it to any single language family have consistently failed. The AI identified patterns suggesting that, while the core symbolic system remained stable, the way people interpreted or vocalized these symbols might have varied by region. Inscriptions from coastal trading sites showed slightly different statistical patterns than those from inland agricultural centers, even though they use the same basic symbols. This matches what we know about the Harappan civilization, which wasn't a unified empire under one ruler, but a network of independent city-states sharing cultural and economic ties. Some symbols appeared to function phonetically, representing sounds or syllables, while others worked as logograms representing entire concepts. The AI detected that people might have mixed these systems fluidly depending on what they needed to communicate. A merchant from one city could read a seal from another city and extract the essential information, even if the exact linguistic interpretation differed. This doesn't mean translation is suddenly easy. We still don't know what specific words or sounds most symbols represent. But the AI has given us a framework for understanding how the system worked, which is arguably more valuable. It's shifted the question from, what language is this? to how did this communication system function in a multilingual trading civilization? That's a question we can actually begin to answer through archaeological and anthropological evidence. This breakthrough reshapes our understanding of who the Harappans actually were. For years, scholars assumed that their lack of monumental inscriptions, like those found in Egypt or Mesopotamia, indicated a simpler society. Kings and pharaohs bragged about their conquests in stone. The absence of such texts in the Indus Valley led some to conclude they had no powerful rulers or complex social hierarchies. But if the AI's analysis is correct, 
we might have been looking for the wrong things. The Harappans might have deliberately developed a flexible, practical communication system precisely because they were a diverse, decentralized civilization. Rather than imposing a single language and culture from the top down, they created tools that allowed different groups to interact and trade while maintaining their local identities. This fits perfectly with archaeological evidence. Harappan cities show remarkable standardization in things like brick sizes and urban planning, suggesting shared technical knowledge. Yet they lack the massive palaces and temples that typically indicate centralized authority in other ancient civilizations. The largest structures are public baths and granaries, infrastructure for the community rather than monuments to individual rulers. The standardized weights and measures found throughout Harappan sites now make more sense. They weren't imposed by an empire, they evolved as practical tools for a trading network. The script served the same function. It was a technology for commerce and administration in a world where people spoke different languages but needed to do business together. This also explains the civilization's remarkable longevity and its mysterious decline. Without a central authority, there was no single point of failure. Cities could decline or be abandoned without collapsing the entire system. But this same flexibility meant there was no strong mechanism to maintain the shared systems during times of stress. When climate change and shifting river patterns disrupted the agricultural base around 1900 BCE, the network gradually dissolved. The script disappeared not because an empire fell, but because the economic system that made it necessary ceased to function. The Harappans emerged from this analysis as sophisticated pragmatists, perhaps more modern in some ways than their more famous contemporaries. They built a globalized trading network without conquest or imperialism, using shared standards and flexible communication rather than military force. The AI's findings are already sparking intense debate and opening new research directions. Several teams are now re-examining Harappan artifacts with this framework in mind, looking for evidence that supports or contradicts the multi-language hypothesis. Archaeologists are paying closer attention to regional variations that might have been dismissed as insignificant before. The next phase involves testing these theories against physical evidence. Researchers are analyzing the context where different symbol variations appear, looking at trade goods, pottery styles, and architectural features that might indicate distinct cultural groups using the same script. Chemical analysis of the materials used in seals might reveal trade patterns that support the idea of a multilingual network. Some linguists are cautiously optimistic that we might eventually extract actual words from the inscriptions, at least for common terms related to trade goods, numbers, and place names. If we can establish even a handful of confirmed meanings, it could unlock much more. Others remain skeptical, arguing that the AI might be finding patterns that confirm its programming rather than revealing historical truth. The technology itself continues to improve. Newer AI systems are being trained not just on the Indus inscriptions, but on everything we know about Bronze Age trade, climate patterns, and cultural exchange across Asia. The goal is to build comprehensive models that can test hypotheses about how the script functioned within its broader economic and social context. What's clear is that this isn't the end of the mystery, but rather a new beginning. The question has shifted from a cryptographic puzzle to an anthropological investigation. We're no longer just trying to crack a code. We're trying to understand how ancient people solved the problem of communication across linguistic boundaries and what that tells us about their society. The story of the Indus script reminds us that ancient peoples were just as creative and sophisticated as we are, sometimes solving problems in ways we wouldn't expect. Their silence across four millennia is finally beginning to break, not with a translation, but with an understanding of what they built and why it worked.